Hey folks, I'm Dieter Melhorn. I see a lot of questions and suggestions online about catfish rigs. In this video, I'm going to show you five mistakes I see a lot of people making. One of the biggest mistakes I see people making is using braided line for leaders. You see, the problem is braided line frays much easier and one little nick in it greatly reduces its strength. Now putting braided line near a fish's mouth, especially around the bristles, not to mention the serrated edge on the fins of a fish is not a good idea. Add in the fact that this braided line is probably coming in contact with debris and snags on the bottom, and it's a recipe for disaster. So what's the solution? Use monofilament line as your leader material. Fluorocarbon will also work just fine. Monofilament is a lot less expensive and a lot more readily available. Two good things about monofilament is it's a lot more abrasion resistant than braided line is. Another nice thing is it's easy to tie a knot with monofilament line. Much easier than tying a knot with braided line. You also get a little bit of stretch with monofilament line that you do not get with braided line. And this can be very helpful when fish are on a short leash. And what I mean by that is they're right next to the boat. There's not a lot of line out. This is when having that little bit of stretch, when that fish shakes his head, it keeps it from pulling that hook out and getting away. Now, I'm not saying that braided line is junk and to never use it. It has its place, especially when you are doing any bottom bouncing or fishing in a situation where you need to feel the bottom and have contact with the bottom. It also comes in handy when you need a lot of line onto a reel, especially if you're saltwater fishing. But generally speaking, for catfish as leader material, it's a bad idea. Another thing that I've seen a lot of people do is using sinker slides when using a Santee rig. Now basically a Santee rig is a leader that has a float on it. It is designed to float the bait up off of the bottom. You can use these Santee rigs when you're anchored up fishing, but most of all people use them when they are drifting, dragging, or trolling for catfish. The problem with using a sinker slide really comes into play when you are anchored up or when you are fishing from the bank. What happens is as soon as you get any slack in the line, the cork will float the bait up higher off of the bottom. Now this can be a real problem when you're fishing in super shallow water because you can look out there, see your cork and your baits on top of the water. Now in some situations, this may work for you. The bad part is you don't know how far your bait has floated up off the bottom. In some situations where you're bank fishing, you can keep your line tight and keep it pinned down against where your sinker's at. But a lot of times, especially if you're in a boat and you're anchored up using a Santee rig, boat sway will lead to some slack line and this can cause some great fluctuations as to how high your bait is in the water column. What's the solution? Do what I do. Put a snap swivel uh, between your main line and your leader line for your Santee rig. Uh, on that snap, I put a weight that pins it to the bottom. There's no give. You know exactly the depth that your bait is in and where it's at in the water column. Now, number three is one that I hear from a lot of people that hit me up directly about not being able to catch fish or they're just getting nibbles. And that's because they're using hooks that are too big. There are so many people that are using giant hooks for giant catfish and fishing in a place where giant catfish do not exist. Now, generally speaking, hooks should be picked on the size of the bait and not the size of the fish you're expecting to catch. I've seen and talked to many people that are using eight, 10, 12, 14 alt hooks and they're fishing in a place where they've only got three, four, five, six pound catfish. Listen folks, I've caught 50 and 60 pound catfish on five and six alt hooks. These are more than big enough to bring catfish in of this size. Yes, I do go up to bigger size hooks. I regularly use eight alt circle hooks whenever I am using bigger baits for bigger fish. Even when I'm using the four, five, six alt hooks for the smaller baits, I'm very confident that if I hook into a big fish, I'll be able to get that fish in. Now for most people fishing in areas with smaller catfish, you're much better off with going something in the two alt to four alt range. These relatively smaller hooks will be sensed less by fish that are feeling around or pecking around on a bait and it'll be much easier for them to get the entire hook into their mouth. Now the fourth one is one I hear a lot. That fish broke my 50 pound line. Whether it's 50 pound line, 80 pound line, 100 pound line, I hear it all the time. That fish broke my line. 
folks, I'm going to be honest with you. You have to do a lot wrong for a fish to break a 50 pound line. What is really happening here is your line became damaged at some point, whether that be by debris on the bottom, debris on the bank where you're fishing, or rolling around in the back of your truck. It is virtually impossible for a fish to break 50 pound line without damage done to the line at some point. Now, what's the best way to prevent this from happening? Well, before each fishing trip, strip off that final five, six, seven, eight feet of line right before the hook. Also, if you happen to get snagged and I have to pull line out of some type of structure on the bottom to get it free, that's another good time to strip that final five, six, seven, eight feet of line off so you've got something fresh without any damage to it. Running your fingers up and down that line, checking for little frays and little nicks in the line is the best way to ensure that your 50 pound line won't break on a 15 pound fish. Now the last one concerns line rattles and putting rattles on your line that many people believe attract fish. Now what are line rattles? Well basically it's a metal ball, a metal ball bearing that is rolling inside of a plastic housing. Sometimes these can be very small little things that you put onto your leader or onto your main line or sometimes they can be something larger like a demon dragon style inline rattle. Now why do you use these things? Well a lot of people believe that the rattling noise will attract fish and strike up curiosity to come closer, see what's going on and take your bait. The mistake I see people making, especially with the little inline rattles, is putting them right up against their hook. I think if you're going to use these things, they need to be further up the line away from the hook, possibly behind the swivel, around the sinker, or somewhere further away from that hook. Because what can happen with those rattles right up against that hook, it can actually interfere with getting a good hook set in the fish's mouth. If you're going to use them, especially on a Santee rig that has a peg float on it, put the rattle above the float, basically between the float and your main line. This will free up that hook so that it can get good contact with the inside of the fish mouth and you can get a hook set on it. There you go guys, five quick tips to help you catch more fish. Well folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no, do, do that one first and then that one. I, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good.